Hi there everyone, welcome to Housebound Hounds. My name's Mandy, I'm a dog trainer on the Gold Coast. Um, I like to specialise in dogs that uh, have either come from rescues or shelters and help through that transition period when they are going into new homes. Um, often these dogs come with no training, uh, not much socialisation, um, may not have lived in homes for very long um, or have mainly lived in a backyard with no, not much interaction from their owners so uh, we're really um, we're really often rehoming dogs that basically need to be taught how to be dogs and need to be taught how to act in our home so when we're um, inviting these dogs into our home or welcoming them in it's really important that we set our homes up so that we can set these dogs up for success. Um, they often haven't had success in their previous lives. So we can do that by um, so gating off areas that we don't want them to have access to unless we're with them. So uh, they might be areas in your home or areas in your garden. So obviously they need some area um, where they can be themselves and we can, you know, have things out for them um, and teach them how to behave. And as their manners improve and as they learn what is acceptable and not acceptable behaviour, we can then bring those barriers down and they can have access to more of our home and of our lives. So first of all, we want to gate off maybe garden beds, maybe um, entries into other parts of the home where we can't um, watch and see what they're up to. So I like to keep them confined to a central area where I can see what they're doing um, with a bed there for them and toys and, you know, where the family like to congregate for games or chats or whatever. So they're spending a lot of time with the family, but still we can be mindful and watchful of what they're doing and interrupt any behaviour that we don't want in our home. So um, just be aware of all those things when we're setting um, our home up. Also, what I like to do is I like to have a crate already set up in the home. If the dog has previously been crate trained, either through foster or in its last home, fantastic. Uh, you can have the crate and hopefully they'll start using that straight away. Not always the case, but if you want to start crate training, having the crate there from the very beginning will help them become familiar with the crate. And then when you start using it and um you know, training them to go into it, it will become a little bit more natural and not as forceful because they're already familiar with it being in their space. So often you'll find the crate set up and it's got a nice comfortable bed in it, they will kind of take interest in that crate anyway and we can just work on that and, um, you know, develop that as part of um, our training and our integration program into the home. So having the crate set up there from right from the beginning is a great idea. Um, it's also uh, can become later on their safe place or somewhere they can go when they need to get away, when they need to escape from whatever's going on. Maybe if you've got visitors and it's too loud or if they, you know, get a little bit frightened during storms, often the crate is the place that they will go if they see it as a safe, secure place in their home. So just be mindful of that. I really believe in crate training and I can, I believe particularly with these dogs, it can be a great asset. So once your home is prepared, you're ready to bring the dog home. So uh, often they've had... A bit of a way to travel you've gone and collected them or it's being dropped off I like to start off out in the yard in the area that you know they're going to be spending outside it's usually a place dogs like to be they like to be on the grass um, they like to be outside they'll toilet out there so often after a bit of a drive they'll want to drink water they'll want to go to the toilet so that's why I think it's a really good place to start let them sniff around they can engage with you they can get used to you they can get used to the smells around your home um it's just, it's just a you know they can get used to their boundaries so you can watch their behavior they can watch your behavior in a very sort of relaxed park-like area in most cases so um, they can go to the toilet you can praise them for that you can 
treat them, reward, tell them how good they are, big thumbs up, particularly being deaf, thumbs up, great job, gone to the toilet. Um, and then you're starting that straight away. So that's then triggers that thought in their head this is where I need to go to the toilet so setting them up for success not taking them into the house where they might toilet inappropriately because they really need it to go we haven't thought about that and we've gone straight inside rather than taking them outside so um, really important to start off in the yard I think for all of those reasons um, also when they're exploring if they check in with you if they look at you have plenty of treats with you so that you can throw them a treat. So we call this checking in. So they're visually checking in to see who, you know, where you are, what you're doing. So every time they do that, we want to encourage it because this is something that they may start doing just because they're unsure now, but it's going to be a valuable tool when we're training later on. So every time they visually look at you, visually check in with you, we want to be rewarding that. That's good behaviour, that's behaviour that we want. So again, all the things that we start when they first arrive in the home, we want to keep that going um, because it will help you know, reward all those behaviours that we want because they will help down the track when we begin training and things like that. So I'd reward all visual check-ins. Um, encourage to explore. So if you find that they kind of get stuck in one part of the garden but it's more of a shyness and not really exploring, you can go and encourage them. So maybe, you know, get in front of them so that they can see you, clap your hands, encourage them to follow you and sniff around somewhere else. So just really encourage that. As they do, you can reward them, tell them they're good, lots of thumbs up, lots of happy body language. Um, obviously, deaf dogs can't hear us, so even though we're saying happy things, we want them to see that our body language, our facial expressions are all happy. They will pick up on this, um, whether you believe it or not. They actually do pick up on that. So talk to them thumbs up uh I sort of because I have deaf and hearing dogs I do a lot of so I when I'm talking to them I use my voice and I also use hand signals so you know the deaf ones will go with the hand signals the hearing ones might say a bit of both so it all it all sort of works out they all pick up on it so it's more about your body language they'll see that it's happy and joyful and encouraging them to go on because they're doing what you want them to do so kind of works the other way as well that if they do something that um, is inappropriate and your body language changes you actually don't have to correct them because they see in your body language that oh she's not too happy that I just did that so you know as you get to know each other that body language will really be uh, what you communicate with so work on that also lots of touching um obviously because they can't hear you there'll be lots of touching so if they're say facing one direction um and you want them to follow but you can't get in front of them just a little tap on the shoulder they'll look to that area to see who's tapped them who's touched them and then you can just wave them on or encourage them with a treat or whatever you need to do to get them to follow you initially um but yeah get them very used to touching and be touching them often always um always great anyway for a dog to be used to a lot of touch for when you go to the vets and things like that so lots of touch light touching um helps you redirect um, helps you get their attention. Another way to get their attention if they're in the yard and they're at a distance is use a ball. Just throw it so it lands in front of their nose and they will look around to see where that came from. So when they look around, throw them a treat. Once they look at you, throw them a treat. So that again is you throw them, you got their attention, they've looked at you, so you, you're rewarding that engagement. So again, all little things that we can start straight away to start those communication um, communications becoming stronger and bonding with them. So uh, we've gone over, we've talked about redirection, inappropriate behaviour a little bit. So if you find that, you know, they're exploring the garden and, you know, they're sniffing under the fence and trying to dig under the fence or something like that, you can just go over, a little tap on the shoulder, 
wave them on. Okay, let's go look at something else. Let's go do something else. So, um, so yeah, at this time we are learning. So we're not correcting. We're not punishing. We're, we're just teaching. We're just redirecting. Let's go do something that I do want you to do. Here's a toy. I don't want you to dig under the fence, but let's go play ball or let's go do this. So, and these are things that we need to be really mindful of because we are learning. We're learning about each other. We're learning boundaries. We're learning what the expectations are. So when we're teaching, we don't want to be correcting. We just want to be saying, uh -uh, that's not what we want to be doing. Let's go do this. So, all right. When we do enter the home, so from there, once we've explored the garden, we've gone to the toilet, all of those things, then slowly at their pace, we can, you know, go in through the door, try and use the door that they would go in and out of, say, from the area where they spend inside. If you've got a direct access to outside, that's probably the best door to go in through. So um, spend more time in that area where say they're going to be spending a lot of time with the family so uh, in my home that would be the family room I would have the hallways and that gated off with baby gates so they can't go down there unless they're with me uh, reason again is if they're in the family room I can watch what they're doing I know what they're doing so I can interrupt any behavior that I don't want and redirect them to a behavior that I do want um, so also by doing that, we're teaching them how to appropriately live in the house. Anyway, as we enter the home, um, they may be a bit sceptical. Who knows? They may never have been in a home before. Um, the floor boards or tiles may be different to what, if, what they've ever walked on before. This can all be quite scary for a dog that hasn't been socialised because they can be slippery. They can't get their grip. Um, they, they've never been in a house before. So you just need to be aware of all of this and go at their pace, go really slowly. Um, if you have a resident dog that you are that you have introduced in the past um, and, again, just before they've come home, the resident dog will be a great help with all this because your resident dog, if it's a good, confident dog that's secure in its home, it will pass that on to the new dog. So it will encourage the dog to go and explore. Um, so, yeah, if you've got that, that's a bonus. If you don't, just keep going at their pace. Let them do things at their pace. If they want to go and, you know, if they engage with the bed that you want them to sleep on, great, throw treats on the bed, on the bed. Um, you know, just drop lots of them, sprinkle them everywhere and say, look, yes, this bed is a great place to be. This is where you'll be sleeping. Guaranteed, if you do that, he's going to think, oh, this is the best place in the world to be on this bed. How great is that going to be when you start your mat training and things like that if your dog already thinks that that bed is the best place to be because, hey, treats fall from the sky. Who would not want to be there? And I never know when it's coming, so I'll just stay here and see how many treats come, like... How good is that? So um, fabulous. So we want them to really engage with their bed, their toys. If they, you know, um, engage with, you may have a few toys just in maybe a box or something next to the bed that they're engaging with. Again, encourage that. If he engages with them, picks one up, praise. Yay, good job. Look at that toy. That's so exciting. Maybe get down, play a little with him. Um, but just, yeah, really encourage that because that's what you want him to do. That way if he goes, say, to the couch and goes to pull the pillow off the couch, you can take the toy over, you can remove the pillow, redirect him from the pillow and back onto the toy. Again, you're starting to set those boundaries. The more boundaries you start setting straight away, the less problems you're going to have later on. So the dog really just wants to please in most cases. Um, so the more you're teaching it um, how to live in your home straight away, the less problems you're going to have down the track. So, um, all right, so I think we've covered most things there. Um, so just to recap, okay, so we come home, we start in the yard. So 
while we're in the yard, we encourage, um, you know, we praise going to the toilet. We celebrate that. We go, yep, that's great. So when we go into the home, we praise all the good behaviour. We reward any engagement with the things that we want him to engage with and we redirect from the things that we don't want him to engage with. We encourage exploration um and we encourage them to approach new things and engage with family members all of that we really want to encourage we don't want to encourage them jumping up on us so if they come and engage with us by jumping we can just gently put them back down on the floor or feed on the floor wait a few seconds and then give them a pat once they're in a calm um, state so we can give them a pat and then you know let them go and do their thing again so every time they come up to us maybe and jump just put them back on the ground wait till they've settled a bit give them a pat and we're encouraging that okay you will get that into attention when you come and engage with me but you're going to get it when all your feet are on the floor so again we want to start that all from day one okay because then we'll have less problems later on um, again, if you've got a resident dog, your resident dog will lead the way in many ways and can be a great help to you. And keeping them confined to a central area where you can watch those behaviours will set your dog up for success because if you can inter intercept um, the inappropriate behaviours before they happen, it's much better than having to deal with them after they've happened. So I'm just going to have a little break there and we'll come back and we'll talk about some bonding games that we can play. Alrighty.